You know, a lot of familiar faces here in the audience. Yeah? <laughs> I recognize at least some of you guys from the booth. What, what about you guys? Where are you guys from? Yeah, Fox and uh, what is that? What are you from? Uh, we make monitors. Okay. Are, are you guys making HP based T monitors? Not yet. Not yet. Here Soon. Right. Absolutely. What about you? Where are you from? Same oh, same company. And I recognize you. We were, you were just at our booth. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Uh, we're, Steve hopefully is talking to you soon. Yeah. Don't you, are you, are you an in integrator? Custom integrator. Custom integrator. Yeah, Toronto. Oh, Toronto, all right. Uh, you need to make sure you talk to this guy about Atlona uh, after, you're, after you get done here. All right, uh, so I'm going to be, I'm, I'm a marketing guy. I'm sure everybody else that you heard from today has either been from a support department or from an engineering department or some sort of capacity such as that. Um, my presentation is going to be a lot different from those guys. I'm not going to be showing you guys flow diagrams and things such as that. Um, but really, what I'm hoping to do here is have a little bit of a conversation um, about HD Base T, HDMI, and how they work together uh, for advanced applications. Um, so before I get started, my name is Christopher Bundy. Um, welcome. Um, I want to thank you guys all for showing up, and thanks to our home viewing audience. Hey. Um, but also, I, I want to thank HD Base T. Um, for several reasons. One, little did they know, Valens, that they were really going to upset and change this industry. I, well, maybe they did. Maybe that was all the plan all along. Um, but they're doing it in such a way where we're all going to benefit from this. And we're going to benefit this from this for, for some time to come. Um, not only that, but uh, without them, we wouldn't have won all the awards we won <laughs> at this particular show. So, yeah, get your HD-based T monitor, man. Uh, you're a shoe-in for Excite Awards, Resi Awards, everything such as that. Uh, even a Commercial Integrator uh, Best Award. Um, that was for our, our newest 8x8 and 16x16 HD-based T matrix switchers. Um, so, a little bit about me. I've been with Lona Technologies uh, since we are five people strong. Uh, we've grown to uh, encompass the globe. <laughs> We're at uh, 52 home-based employees as well as a vast networks of reps and such like that. Um, but uh, one thing that has uh, driven me in this whole industry is my love for the applications, the technology itself, and signal flow. In fact, signal flow is the only reason I got into this industry in the first place, um, because I, I just get it. I understand it, and I like it. Um, and what they're doing here with HD Base T is allowing us a whole new method of signal flow that doesn't have the limitations of the most widely accepted consumer digital connectivity format known to man, HDMI. Um, how many of you guys are completely happy and think HDMI has no errors and <laughs> problems? Nobody? Nobody believes that? Wow, uh, you guys are all should have come to the HDMI symposium, um, I guess a couple of days ago. They, uh, they were all believing that HDMI was hook, line, sinker. My main problem with HDMI is um, it's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. But my main problem with HDMI is the limitations built within it. Um, and so when HD Base T came along, what they're truly allowing us to do is overcome the limitations that we're experiencing over a standard HDMI cable. And I, and I think that's fantastic. So today what I'm going to actually talk about is a little bit about a, what HD Base T is. Now, I'm not here to try to tell you all the, uh, the uh, frequency modulations and all that of what affects HD Base T and what it makes it is, but really talk about the, the benefit. So the five play technology, the uh, the uh, idea of being able to take full 1080p audio, your internet, your power, and control in, uh, in well, control in two directions, um, really benefits us because previously, all these systems were built as separate systems. Um, even from a connectivity uh, standpoint, someone such as us, um, we look at a matrix switch as your switch for video, your switch for audio and video, actually. Um, and we do do an involve uh, such, such things as IR, two-way communication, RS-232, two-way communication. But however, I mean, when you start integrating these uh, third-party control systems, uh, such as AMX, Crestron, um, Control 4, things such as that, you really end up in a limitation to what your switch can, is capable of versus what your control system is capable of. And we see, and maybe you can actually speak to this at some point, is that we see a lot of people end up bypassing um, these actual functions that are built into matrix switches from any manufacturer uh, of extended control because of the fact that it's usually pretty limited. Bidirectional IR for a switch has previously been limited to the switch only. Um, you can get an input and an output to each one of your zones, but you're really not having true bidirectional IR. With HD Base T, because of the, the um, overcoming the limitations of what we are capable of doing over TDMS, we're really able to really get a true bidirectional 
IR communication. Um, power is something that we ourselves haven't implemented yet, but we're looking forward to it greatly. Um, when you think about this, here's the great thing about power over AC based T in a low voltage system. These integrators, these guys who are out there in the field taking your technology, taking your products and installing them are not electricians. They're not allowed to touch high voltage. Well, most of them are. Some of them actually maybe have a combina combination of that. But when you take the high voltage part of it out of your walls and you're running all your power for all your devices that the integrator is doing, that puts more control into their hands, allows them more ability to put that in plasma wherever they want to go because they know they're carrying the power for that over a low voltage wire such as Cat5. Um, AC base T, as we all know, is, uh, is uh, basically considered um, or, or marketed a lot right now as a consumer technology format. Um, we have experienced uh, almost the opposite. It's been, uh, we've definitely had a lot in the consumer world, but the commercial world is definitely benefiting from this, especially in the digital signage markets. Um, oops. Sorry, guys. Let me just tell you guys, I'm a keynote guy. <laughs> so. Uh, this whole PowerPoint thing, is, uh, we're working on it. So <clears throat> the thing about HDBase T2 is the fact that it works over the same way that we're used to from Ethernet. The same things that we've been spending over 20 years uh, developing, uh, our 100 base T or 10 base T Ethernet signals. These are things that we're used to, things that we're, we are, are within our control, whereas TDMS and proprietary control systems truly are not. Um, that's why I think the importance of a standard in a transport system really, really uh, shows its, uh, its worth, its merit, especially at this point in time. Um, we have a lot of competitors in the market. There's, uh, our, your, our, our key digital was just here before us. Uh, I think Kasha from Geffen uh, was here before that. And trust me, while we may be competitors, we're all working together. We're more partners than anything else. You know, like as we push one another, we develop more and more stuff. Um, it's a constant thing. But one thing that we can all benefit from is the fact that this is a standard in uh, extension. Now, the guy from T Key Digital actually just touched on this earlier. Um, as display manufacturers, um, actually PrimeView is a, a good one to, uh, to look to. They actually have a, a, a HD based T monitor already in place. But as more display manufacturers come out with an HD based T output, we can go directly out of our switches, our balins, or whatever, directly into those televisions. Same with sources. Um, once we start doing this, we start eliminating cable costs. Once you start do eliminating cable costs, you start eliminating overhead. Now, there's a lot of margin in, in HDMI cables. Anybody who's buying them will tell you that. But at the same time, you can't field terminate an HDMI cable. And if you can, you're amazing. And I, I applaud you. <laughs> oh, well, well, can you field terminate an HDMI cable? Like, so... <laughs> oh well, you know, you know, if uh, if 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 um, that one manufacturer's got it, then kudos to them. But at the same time, I, I guarantee you that 99% of the uh, the market that's out there is not able to do this. And and really, with a Cat5 cable, I mean, my mom can. Well, my mom's a little bit more tech savvy than most, but she can actually cat, uh, field terminate a Cat5 cable, shielded, unshielded, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and and that's what we're working towards. That's what we're uh, working towards. An easier cable to pull, an easier cable to terminate, it's something that you can customize your own, in your own way. And that's why <clears throat> using a 10-base T uh, system, a, 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 a um, HD-base T system over Cat5 makes it so it's not just affordable, but also, but also uh, um, a, a great boon to all of us. Now, the thing about the HD-base T is it's a consortium of different products, and that's what's great about it. Valens may be the chipset manufacturer that's putting all this stuff out for us, but we got a whole, whole bunch of people behind this. Um, now, I haven't heard much of peeps out of, out of Samsung, Sony, and LG, but I, you know, from the rumor mill, mill, I've been hearing around 2013, we're going to be having a lot more um, products and uh, monitors and stuff like that with HD Base T on it. Don't quote me on that. I am not from, uh, <laughs> from any of these companies, so I can't say for sure. However, with that in mind, um, you know, I've got so much stuff talking about HD Base T, uh, about what HD Base T is, but I know you guys have been here for a, a while through several people and they've all done the same sort of thing, explain to you exactly what HD Base T is. Um, so I'm going to skip over a couple of slides here and we'll jump to the meat here in a minute. But when you think about all these manufacturers throwing their weight behind it, such large manufacturers as who made, the, made up that consortium, um, it's going to be an inevitable force. It's going to be driving. Uh, it's like HDMI and Silicon Image. They really were able to capture the content producers and really pull that in. And from this side, we're capturing 
capturing the actual display manufacturers, the source manufacturers, and pulling them in. And so a company like us, a connectivity company, is going to just greatly benefit from this because we have a new way, a new way to provide integrators exactly what they're looking for, flexibility. So for those who don't have a firm understanding of the capabilities of the VS100 um, RX and TX chips, um, these are the ones that we're currently using. And uh, we do have the, are, are using a firmware upgrade that allows us to get a little bit more distance than uh, might be uh, shown on common spec. I think the common specs is 328 feet, um, whereas the, the uh, upgrade says 450 feet at uh, distances, or at 1080p at 24 uh, Hz or 1080i or any of the lower resolutions for HDTV resolutions. However, um, you are able to get uncompressed video and audio up to 10.2 gigabits, 100 meter transmission, we just talked about that, low cost standard Cat5 E6 uh, or Cat5 6 cables. Yeah? Are you guys recommending STP like the last guy? I recommend shielded twisted pair in anything that has to do with AV. Um, I actually just did a little talk about in the HDMI symposium about the concept of stray capacitance. Um, stray capacitance can come from all sorts of different locations, including from dirty power, uh, from unconditioned power, uh, from uh, electromagnetic interference, and we're going to get actually into that. That's a, a, a big part of uh, uh, my applications later on. Um, and uh, it just anything can actually send an extra, extra um, stray capacitance. And if you have something that can ground and absorb that kind of stuff, you're really, really going to be in, in a benefit, no matter what the signal um, pathway is. So yes, we're going to recommend shielded on everything, um, no matter what kind of Cat5 you use, if you're using it in my world anyway. Um, the RJ45 connector is something, once again, that anybody can easily field terminate. Uh, it supports 100 megabits uh, Ethernet, um, which means that you know, you're able to get your Ethernet across the same data channel as you have been doing with your video, which HDMI does have that in, in their high-speed HDMI spec. Um, but now, with once again, we're going over Cat5. We're not buying stuff that's like at, at most $10 a foot and at least maybe $2 a foot versus something that's $0.06 cents a foot like Cat5. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? There's going to be uh, um, the the once again the firmware upgrade allows us to go a little a uh, little farther than 100 meter. But also, I believe that the new spec is 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 it out or is it coming out, Dana? Uh, it's coming out, but yeah. it's going to stay uh, uh, 100 meters. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's another great thing about HD Base T is the future proofing into, into that. You know, um, we're not quite at 4K by 2K yet um, with any of the consumer technologies and in some of the commercial technologies when you're going to like uh, the larger format projectors and things such as that, you're able to get it. But right now, uh, if you put an HD Base T pathway or signal pathway in, into place, uh, you know that you're going to be ready for that next upgrade of Blu-ray, which um, as I understand it should be uh, so, uh, fairly soon. Um, the last um, boon to HD Base T is of course the support of, a, of HDCP. Now, previously, um, before I move on to this slide, previously, a lot of some manufacturers like us, like I said, would use TDMS. Um, TDMS has a whole bunch of different, um, of course, uh, benefits, but also a couple of uh, uh, drawbacks uh, within it. And then beyond that, a, a lot of people using 2Cat5 would being one of the major drawbacks of TDMS. Beyond that, um, a lot of people develop their own proprietary systems, right, that are using a single Cat5 cable, but you don't know how they're doing it. And a lot of them were doing a digital to analog changeover, which technically with HDMI consortium is illegal. You, you don't want to do that for real. Um, but, you know, the HDPC police, HDCP police hadn't busted uh, quite everybody yet. When you do do a digital to analog conversion, pre pretty much you're stripping the HDCP out of it, sending it across the Cat5 cable as an analog signal, re-encoding it to digital, and then putting it into um, a television. Um, so that's where a lot of different people were developing their single Cat5 uh, uh, extenders. Um, at this point in time, you know, we as a manufacturer have discontinued all single Cat5 extenders except for HD Base T. We're in fact moving to an HD Base T across all of our uh, balance system, anything that we're going to convert to uh, a Cat5. We see this as, um, as uh, the next evolution of transport systems. Um, <clears throat> For you guys, uh, who's, who's actually used HD Base T? Who's got anything HD Base T? Have you ever uh, installed anything HD Base T? I'm working on a, we're, on a company, we're working on a project where we're doing all crush on digital media stuff. Oh, you're using the DMC system? Oh, okay, absolutely. Did you get, did you get to talk to anybody from Crush on about that? Um, well, we just showed up yesterday, it took me half an hour to walk around the store. 
Oh, yeah? Hey, when you do, ask him about our uh, connectivity kit. They'll uh, tell you all sorts of wonderful things. <laughs> you know, Crestron's one of those, another one of those things. You know, they're, they're a competitor, but at the same time, a partner. And I think that's like, you know, technologies like this is what we really all rally behind and end up supporting each other with. Um, so the one thing about HDBase-T is, you know, I've always believed that nobody cares about your technology. They care about what your technology enables them to do. And what your cable, uh, what your HDBase-T technology enables them to do is get rid of those extra pathways. Like I said, that, that extra pathway for your your third party control system, that extra pathway because you have a zone audio system, that extra pathway because you're extending all of this over Cat5, you know, and no more are you thinking about pulling, you know, four or five Cat5s or whatever happens to come down your way, you're pulling, they may be two, just one backup just in case you put a screw through one of them and sending everything down the single Cat5. We're also having distance that is uh, um, supported that is not, not so much a concern anymore. Now previously, anybody who wanted to get above 300 feet, while we do have balins that use TDMS and multiple Cat5 cables to do that, I would always recommend them switching up, they will in a commercial environment at least, to a fiber optic balin. This has been extremely cost prohibitive, especially for um, residential in general. Nobody's going to uh, um, pull like you know five or six strands of, uh, of uh, fiber optic for a single family home in a in a. Um, uh, uh, middle class income level, you know, that's going to be reserved for those mansions, those brownstones in New York, that Manhattan and uh, those kind of projects and such like that. But when we uh, are really trying to actually overcome the distance limitations of Cat5, it's so easy to eat up 300 feet. I know, I mean, I don't live in a very large home <laughs> whatsoever, but if I were to go up the wall around like all the studs and stuff across the ceiling, down another room and into the other room and down into the basement, 300 feet is already eaten up. With 450 feet, that gives us a little bit more wiggle room. And usually I can actually make that within that. Plus, not to mention, when you're coming in and out of a bailing, you can still run your uh, the spec length of HDMI in and out of it. So um, that really helps us as well. Um, power over, uh, of, of, over Cat5, as I said below, uh, earlier, that allows integrators to really control the power pathways for the products that are going to be connected to that. Currently, like I said, we haven't ex exactly adopted the uh, power to HDMI over HDMI in our balins and our matrix switchers, um, but it's our next phase. We actually, we uh, luckily through Infocom, we're able to meet up with other people through this HDMI um, alliance um, that has, or the HDCP alliance that uh, have really uh, allowed us to implement chipsets in a new way. But when you allow integrators to actually run their single pathways, you can actually prevent them from having things such as over uh, abundance of EMI going, going through. Allow them to control where your uh, power is going to and allow them to get into places like such as that, that one TV that had to be on the fireplace, that had to be on the brick wall, things such as that. Um, and the support for uh, quality controls. Actually, the, the supporting uh, not just quality control, but supporting, supporting a, um, a variety of different things, such as the true uh, spec of HDMI over single Cat5, has, has been a complete boon. Because once again, you're not in the wild, wild west anymore. You're not just dealing with whatever I happen to, you know, concoct in my labs in order to send Cat5 down, or in, some, in order to send HD signal down a Cat5 cable. Um, because of that, the whole industry will come to a level where you're not like um, uh, having to wonder what one device is capable of. If, if Key Digital can do this, why can't Atlonas do this? If, if Geffens can do this, why can't Kramers do this? Um, you're able to get the full spec out of each and every single one of them. Um, recently, I know this is an unrelated topic, um, uh, Google decided to update all of their uh, of Android devices to a new version. It hasn't actually hit through all of them to prevent the fact that different manufacturers were getting different things out of their software. Um, the same thing has been going on with HDMI and bail-in systems. Some ones are able to do high-speed HDMI. They have a, if they say they have a spec of 1.3 or, you know, some say they have a spec of 1.4, but that's not technically how you're supposed to use it. Um, but they're not able to get all the features of uh, 1.3. They're not able to get 3D formats. They're not able to get, um, well, especially the uh, the other the non-spec uh, 3D formats that are used by like DirecTV and things such as that. Um, now we're able to get all of that. We know we're able to get all of that because we're getting the true HDMI spec across a, a true standards-based um, uh, uh, transport system. <clears throat> so. So that's an, um, a little bit of background of what, why I think the benefits of, um, of HDBase-T are 
you know, are, are definite and apparent. Um, but the true meat of what I'm actually talking about today is uh, applications. So before I get into this, I have to tell you that um, a lot of these uh, are based on case studies that we're currently pursuing. Um, are, they're both, both these major ones are actually both based on a case studies. Um, because of that, um, not them, they're all still under embargo, so the names and faces have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, <laughs> But um, you might be able to guess uh, what some of them are actually about. Okay, so in uh, Santa Clara, there is a museum, um, a highly, highly technical museum. Um, and they had decided that they were going to redo the way they actually did uh, digital kiosk information. The problem with this tech museum <clears throat> is that they use quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of, uh, of high voltage uh, uh, devices in their displays. There's lots of lighting, lots of fluorescence, lots of all sorts of problems. And uh, we went first went in with them, and the integrator that actually uh, approached the job realized that, oh yeah, they need a matrix switch to get all the signal out to, uh, um, to where they're, from their head end to where they're actually uh, having their, um, their, their displays, their, their uh, attractions, if you will. And um, when he did that, he put in a, uh, our standard TMS um, HD, or HDMI uh, matrix switcher, and uh, he found that he had nonstop interference. He had just problems, sparkles, everything. Um, his DDC channels would work, and then they wouldn't work. Um, you know, he would get HDCP handshaking, he wouldn't. Sometimes the monitor would throw up the resolution and throw, show no signal whatsoever, and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, and because of this, it ended up being a problem. He came to us and asked us, you know, is there something I can do? Should I use, you know, better shielded cables and stuff like that? Tried shielded cables and still had the same problem. So it was just so much to o actually overcome. Um, now, I, I, now, we were um, trying to help him come, overcome his issues, and his issues were, were fairly extensive. I mean, uh, the, the, the main ones that had to do with HD base T uh, or with the uh, HDMI uh, distribution, uh, we were able to resolve fairly quickly because uh, the first thing we did was uh, we said, we just developed this new switch. It's a 16 by 16 matrix switch and it uses HD base T. This is the perfect time to put it through its runs. Um, so we gave him this switch and allowed him to slap it in. Um, <clears throat> Now, his, uh, his also, he had a couple of issues of uh, having each exhibit needing IR controllable displays. Um, the IR controllable displays, they use some, <laughs> some amazing things, which hopefully soon we, you'll see the case study on the actual uh, uh, HDBase-T as well as the Lona website, but um, I can't go too much into depth, depth about that. But they're using IR in amazing ways, like from human interaction and things such as that. Um, but he needed to have that IR as a two-way communication moving, from, uh, moving to each um, exhibit. He also needed to be able to overcome his EMI if, uh, issues, and also he couldn't tear up anything. There was a single Cat5 given, brought to every single uh, exhibit station um, that had a monitor, that was a touchscreen monitor where you go to their website and do, um, do all the information for the actual uh, um, uh, exhibit. You would find all your exhibit information. Um, so he wasn't able to tear up the floor or tear up the exhibits themselves. He just kind of had to layer on top of them. Um, and so when we were looking at different ways of running and, and doing all these uh, um, uh, well extension over a single Cat5, uh, he started looking into the, the, our HD base T-switch. When we slapped it in there, he overcome, overcame all of his problems. In fact, um, the issue that he was most commonly facing, though his showstopper, if you will, was all based on the I2C uh, circuit. Now, this is actually, I stole this slide from my HDMI presentation yesterday, and yes, it is a wordy, wordy slide, ladies and gentlemen. But um, the, what I really want you to uh, know about is, for those who don't know, DDC is based on I2C. It's an inter-integrated circuit. It was like used for cell phones for a long time, uh, things to uh, talk within a circuit to each other. Um, as a guy from actually Key Digital was talking about, that's a very slow, uh, slow circuit, but it's very, very susceptible to stray capacitance um, from unconditioned power, from um, <clears throat> from whatever it happens to be. Uh, it could be uh, your, your unshielded balins, your EMI, such like that. Um, this was where a lot of his problems was actually coming from, was the interruption of the DDC channel because of stray capacitance. Now, the great thing about HD base T is when we dropped in our HD base T matrix, which are our Pro 2 HD 1616M, um, it just automatically had no problem. He was still using shielding. But he still had no problem. Um, and that's because HDMI, or HD base C rather, um, 
is much less susceptible uh, than our TDMS balance systems. It's much less susceptible because of the fact that, once again, it's using the pulse amplitude modulation. Now, um, I'm not nearly as technically in depth as that last guy was, but apparently they're using uh, PAM-16. Um, which, uh, as you guys saw, it, was, it allows you to change your, not only your amplitude, but your, uh, your length in, in, in preventing yourself from having so much jitter, so much uh, susceptibility to, uh, to crosstalk. Um, we put in this switch, and not only were we able to get the distances that he needed, a perfectly clear picture, but he was also able to take advantage of something, some other things that we were able to put, put into an HDBST switch that we were definitely not able to do in our TDMS switch. Um, our Pro 1616M-SR, uh, which is really is send and receive when you have the balance system in place, um, allows us to not only take advantage of the sending of the signal from the switch, but all else is a two-way communication. Our bi-directional IR is actually a true bi-directional zone IR system, meaning that instead of just having um, your switch bi-directional, as in you can send and uh, receive information from that switch, maybe control the display, but you can't really have a two-way communication. Now we can control everything from any single zone. One zone can affect another zone. One zone can affect the switch. One zone can affect the, thing, the sources attached to the switch. Also, he had a couple of, uh, uh, of different, um, and, and this was a small part of it, he had a couple of different RS-232 control devices that he needed to be able to drop in and extend over that single path pathway. Now, that's much more of an issue with our, our, our next application, but um, we are able to actually extend that RS-232 uh, using a new method that we we're able to get across from our actual switches. Um, that next situation, I'll just go ahead and jump w within it. Well, let's wrap up the, that long story. You guys, uh, in about three weeks' time, definitely check out the case study, but definitely make it out to Santa Clara and check out the, uh, the unnamed museum. And you, uh, you can see this thing in action. It's just, it's, it's beautiful, an AV system done perfectly well. Um, the next situation that we actually did, same actual integrator, was uh, just got turned on to our HD base T prototype uh, 16 by 16 switch, decided that he needed to be able to do this in a home. He needed to be able to do this in a home because he is facing quite a bit of issues in this, basically a smart home, uh, or a small, smart part of home, uh, for a very high level executive with Apple. Uh, so he was a... Uh, <clears throat> He was looking to be able to not only control the home automation, but able to also do the video distribution in a single path. Once again, having the issue of a Cat5 being run everywhere previously for an Ethernet uh, situation, which had then got moved into a, a wireless uh, um, router for the whole house, uh, but he had that one Cat5 to deal with. The rest of the house is done just amazingly. Uh, the, the, imported tiles and things such as that that you cannot just like break and tear up uh, without being the re-import. Um, so his main issue was each room that he was going for his own had individually controlled P RS-232 PTZ cams and those were pan tilt zoom. Uh, the guy wanted to be able to jump on his laptop and view this from everywhere. Um, he also had an RS-232 controlled lighting system uh, that was not uh, connected to the, the centrally, um, uh, the central control system. And he also had a multi-room AV system that was using rack mounted compo components. Um, he wanted to be able to utilize that one single Cat5 uh, um, uh, uh, cable run in order to not only control all these PTZ cameras, but also to be able to control the lighting system and also be able to have a fully, truly multi-room audio video system. Now this house is fairly large, uh, so also overcoming a distance was a, a little bit of an issue. Now our solution uh, was also to offer the Pro 2 HD88M, that's our uh, 8x8 matrix, which are actually an award-winning uh, matrix, which you can see at the HD Base T booth. Um, this switch, um, the great thing about this is also its ability to uh, forward HD or RS-232 commands. So what we do is we take a command from any third-party control system, and our, one of our um, well, our commands are have a subset where we can encapsulate a command to another device within our RS-232 commands. So you send this RS-232 command, and it says Zone One. This is the command. It will send it down through the switch through the right pathway to zone one to the device that's connected to the RS-232 rather than taking that command from the switch, or to the switch rather. At the same time, he can control the switch, um, the switch itself through the same exact port. Um, and that's a little difficult, and hopefully I can explain it to you real quick with this piece of paper. So what we have here is our switch, and we go out to an AV receiver box.
from there, we have our AV signal to our television. And then through the RS-232 to the PTZ camera. When we send a, switch to, a command to our switch to switch for AV, we can still use RS-232. As in, you can still use Crestron, AMX, wh whoever is using RS-232 for commands to actually switch the, like one video to this room or switch the audio or whatever it happens to be, send new edited information to our switch. Um, the myriad of commands that you can do with the switch itself. But instead of sending that command just to the switch, um, you can send uh, the command Z1 bracket, then whatever the RS-232 command for the switch is with a bracket, and it sends it off to that actual zone. So that's going to go through zone one, goes to that thing. Our switch knows that's not a command for it. Um, our switch knows that that command is going off to something else. The PTZ, while the, when it actually arrives to the PTZ camera, the brackets are dropped away, and it only actually gets the actual command that the PTZ camera wants. So that way the PTZ camera can do whatever it happens to need to do. Um, with this kind of with this kind of control forwarding, uh, we're able to take advantage of a truly integrated control and AV system. Uh, we're able to get not only uh, um, the commands that we want for our lighting across that same pathway of, HD of the HDBase-T Cat5, but also all the audio video, the, re the return channel, well, we're not actually technically using the return channel in this, uh, in this situation whatsoever. Um, in fact, I gotta say, and I told this at HDMI yesterday too, I honestly still don't get the point of the audio return channel. <laughs> I think that a system with a, a, uh, an audio mix uh, separately should be done. Anyway, but um, this whole system was able to utilize not only the, art, the control, not only the audio video over it, not only the bi-directional IR as well, but also the ethernet. This, this, another thing is uh, this TV is uh, the LG Smart TV. Have you guys seeing these things, a whole Plex system on that actual television. I love it, it was beautiful. I, if I could you know, ever take somebody's home, I would take this one. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we're able to use all that over the single Cat5 pathway. Whereas before, we're looking at these Cat5s going, what is this, what are we gonna do with this? Um, we're gonna have to get a single, another Cat5 just to get our video over there, just to make sure that we have a channel for our video and our audio and, and uh, DDS channel. Um, now with the HDBase T involved, we're able to do so much more over single signal cat pathways. So why does this matter? Why, does your, why do uh, your customers care if you're an integrator? Why do your uh, customers care if you're a manufacturer about all this stuff? I mean, they can pull another Cat5 and then just charge the customer more money um, for, for the integrators. They, they could decide to you know, spend less money as TDMS systems are, 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 are dropping in price because HD, HD base T is killing it. Um, they could just decide to go with, uh, with that method. But the whole point of our system, our whole industry is innovation. Um, nobody needs a souped up HD based uh, uh, television system in their house, but they want it. They, nobody needs to have a full home theater capable of 4K by 2K and 1610 resolutions, but they want it. Um, this kind of entertainment is, is what we want. And previously, we're limited to the specs and what our company and what our industry in general is limited to. Uh, so, we aren't able to do all the different uh, installations of our dreams because of the fact that HDMI will only go 66.9 feet and TDMS is susceptible to EMI and, um, and needs multiple Cat5 cables. And all of this is actually a limitation to us. So when we put in a standard like HDBase-T that is able to overcome distances as well as combine so many different pathways down a single Cat5, we're given options. And that's why this matters, is that you give your customers options. You give your installation customers the option to have the TV exactly where he wanted, not where he needed to have it because the, the uh, high voltage uh, 120 was running through, the running through the wall. He can drop the Cat5 to anywhere. Um, your customer is able, your, your display customers who have HD base T know that when they bought a switch, whether they bought it from us or from the Crestron DMC or anybody, they know that when they come out of that Cat5 port, they can go into your TV and know it's going to work and not go, well, did they do a lot of testing to make sure they were compatible or they partners together so because then I'll know they're compatible. Is that how it's working? No, we are giving so much more room, wiggle room to accomplish the uh, installations and these digital signage products, the projects of our dreams. You know, things, things that are beyond uh, what we were previously capable. 
capable of. I, I remember not too long ago, I, in fact, I think that's still in my garage, I had the uh, Pioneer Elite, this giant, huge, you know, box. It was like, I think it was just as deep as it was wide. Um, putting that in my living room, I mean, my living room had to change. You know, like I couldn't put a coffee table in the middle of the room because I had four feet sticking out from the wall to have this television in there. And with the advent of flat screens, which are getting flatter and flatter, and eventually there's just gonna be a film that you lay on the wall, um, that issue was overcome. And so now my, my living room is exactly how I want it. Um, and HD Base T is a similar kind of concept. You know, you've overcome the distance limitations of H HDMI. You've overcome your control limitations of, uh, of bi-directional IR. And you're able to put it all together and give everybody exactly what they want. And once you get more options, the more creative that you can be in your installations. The more creative your customers can be when they're buying your products. The more chances they're going to spec this information into whatever their application might be. So this is my product. This is uh, one of the current products out. I didn't have a picture of my 8x8, um, so I wasn't able to edit it in. I actually just added these product slides at the very end um, just because I figured you guys would probably maybe want to know what I'm talking about. Um, this is our HD Base T 16x16M. Um, once again, it's capable of everything that, uh, that uh, is uh, on the HD Base T spec. The 330 feet. We're going 450 on at 1080p uh, um, or, or 1080i, um, and that's thanks to a, a wonderful little firmware upgrade. Um, we do do use redundant power supplies. We do use a single Cat5, and um, here's another thing I was talking about. As far as uh, it's definitely an IP assignable switch, uses RS-232, and you have your bi-directional IR for the switch. But it's hard to see on, on this actual um, uh, picture here, but right here beneath our HDMI ports, you're seeing that there's actually two uh, IR ports for every single zone. Um, the RS-232 commands, we only need one because it actually outputs to, uh, through the Cat5 to uh, the receiver units would have bi-directional IR, RS-232, Ethernet output, HDMI output, um, and soon, power. <laughs> So all of this is uh, actually in, a, in our switch is uh, made like our, all of our other switches. We use redundant power supplies. We try to make sure that these things are rated for not just um, residential use, but the same things that we put in commercial use. We don't charge a difference just to add an additional power supply. We want to make sure that you know, these redundancies are in place so that no matter if you're an in integrator that's start starting with residential and moving to, um, to commercial or, or vice versa, that you have the, the same products that you're used to uh, can be used for both. Um, now, I've talked a lot about matrix switches, mostly because these advanced applications that we're using um, for, um, for HD Base T are all based around our matrix switch, uh, switchers. But however, there's definitely a need for point to point. Um, we just dealt with somebody who's in rental and staging, who was dealing with these, you know, um, they're, whether they are like uh, Neutric uh, um, uh, cables that are basically like tactical Cat5 cables, right? Um, so he was using these balance systems, like, you know, TDMS balance systems to get uh, video out to his confidence monitors for general sessions, out to the uh, overflow projectors so people can see from a lot large distances. Um, but he kept on coming in into issues once again with, um, with in because in rental and staging, you're using five wire power that's just gigantic and it puts off a lot. And once you cross that, um, your signal is just done. It's, it's not going to make it. Um, he started using these actual balins uh, as we, this was our first product out uh, using HD Base T. He started using these balins and has now purchased, I think, well over 250 of them um, just for the rental and staging market. Now, rental staging is different. You don't just drop these and, and leave them forever. You, you pick them back up <laughs> when you're done renting them out. Um, but the great thing about him, he was able to get not only um, the Ethernet to where he wanted to go, um, because they weren't going to the same pathways as those television, but he did need to have internet uh, out to the podium internet out to the, uh, or ethernet rather, he wasn't using an internet, it was kind of a LAN situation, out to from the uh, people who were actually controlling the actual uh, PowerPoint presentations backstage. Um, he was able to use them all and actually this one product re ended up replacing four products uh, that he was using on his line in order just to get that same signal done. Um, whenever you can eliminate four products to have one product in there, you, you, you've just come up one. Um, and the same thing will happen with uh, when once you know more display manufacturers actually put this uh, AC base T in because you can think about this not as a Balin um, like we normally would, but really as an AC base T converter 
<laughs> and an AC to AC um, and an AC to AC to HDMI converter. Um, so in, in the future, you can actually eliminate the uh, receiver unit entirely and just go straight into um, you know, the Prime View television, or hopefully your guys' television soon here too. And by the way, we should talk afterwards. We can partner. <laughs> um, uh, Hey, no problem, no problem. Actually, um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be going that much longer here, gentlemen. Um, I actually wanted to say thank you guys all for making it out here. Um, sorry, I'm not doing over a bunch of slides and stuff like that. I hope you guys got a little bit something from me. Um, really, the great thing about this is not, once again, not what the technology is so much, is what it allows you to do. And um, that's why I think, you know, HD Base T, once again, the way of the future. I run around like an HD Base T cheerleader, <laughs> and getting everybody to jump on the bandwagon. I think it's uh, the, next, uh, the next step for our industry. It's really, really changing the way we are able to use transport systems. Um, is there any questions? No? No? I have some questions for you guys. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe, uh, do I have any time left? What is, I've like, got like 15 minutes or something like that. Okay, um, then maybe, maybe if you guys are all willing, since we're so, we're, we're an intimate group, right? We, uh, we all know each other, we're sitting next to each other at least. Um, maybe we could have a little bit of a round table. Are you guys, is anybody support that at all? Yeah? Yeah, you guys look like you support it, whether you say something or not. Um, I have a couple of questions for, for you, Dana, um, such as on, on um, can you tell us about other manufacturers uh, um, or perhaps um, display manufacturers who, who are implementing this and how soon that we should start seeing that kind of technology. So that's the question I think that everyone that enters our booth asks. Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, I can't give you a date. Well, not <laughs> a date, say. but how about a realm? <laughs> Um, of course, as Chris said, we um, were adopted very, very quickly uh, in the CI market. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is actually uh, the strategy that, that we do uh, to penetrate the market. Um, we think that now that in less than a year since, since the Alliance was founded, um, we have become basically de facto standard in that market. Um, the technology has proven to be very mature. Uh, and very high quality, um, thanks to that market that has such um, um, high end requirements. Um, and um, so, why we adopt is the demand for us and why we adopt. So, um, if you do come to the HD Base T booth, um, you will see prototypes of, of consumer electronics products that we do believe that are next to enter the market. Um, one great example for that is uh, projectors. Um, so uh, HGBC is an amazing application for projectors, and um, and it's also an example for a demand that we have in the market from those um, companies such as um, Athlona, Crestron, um, and other um, CI uh, um, um, companies that are approaching the projector manufacturers themselves and saying, why don't you use HD Base T? Right. Um, so once you have that in the projectors, you'll have that in um, the TVs or, or in the AV receivers, also a classic example for um, a CE product that, that, uh, that we see uh, HD Base T benefiting. So I can advance, okay, and it stays in the stream. Remember where you heard it first, right? Okay. <laughs> the major, Samsung and LG yeah. will be introducing the first ones at CES in January. Uh-oh. Um, yes, you're going to have to strike <laughs> that from the table. <laughs> 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 okay, I do have a couple other questions for, um, for, 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 well, not for you and for you. Um, for you, first off, why did, what is drawing you to HD Base T? I mean, we, we as uh, manufacturers sometimes live in a bubble. Um, we definitely try to communicate with you guys just as much as possible and answer all your questions and, and, and develop based on that. Um, but from your point of view, what do you think you're getting out of HDBC? Um, to be absolutely honest, the, like, first off, I've only been with my company now for maybe six or eight months. 
and having really no experience in this industry, seeing some of the newest stuff, for example, DM um, HG uh, from Crestron and things like that, of course, being here today, seeing the actual new products that are coming from all the different companies, it, like you said, it's the way of the future. It just makes sense that it would be this way, right? So for me to be kind of new in the industry and to dive in head first to something like this, it's kind of exciting. And at the same time, I can see so much potential because I don't have any of that like yeah. previous yeah. experience. Yeah, that's baggage. Yeah, yeah. 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 the uh, the non-stop late night headaches of making your head exactly. long. Like, why? But other than that, I mean, really just seeing what it's like, what it's capable of doing, what Crestron and Bradley can do, and what all the other companies are actually starting to implement. It's just uh, it makes everything else look silly. Really. So I mean like that's essentially why I find myself is just kind of trying to grapple onto the newest stuff so that I can, you know, use it. Yeah. No, definitely. I think it does make all the rest of the stuff look silly. I think that's it's once again the importance of standards here, you know. But when it's the wild, wild west out there, no no integrator can get a hold of like using multiple brands. And I don't know, I used to do a lot of integration myself before I got in the world of talking about integration. You know, those who can't do teach. Um, so when I used to do all this stuff, I mean, I never used just one manufacturing ever. End up just going, I'll put all my eggs in one basket. I will never use anything else but you know that one brand. Um, but without that, you just never know what you're going to get. You never know if the uh, key digital bailings are going to be exactly the same performance and kind of spec as what their their counterparts are matched up to. You just don't know with that kind of stuff. And I think that once you a standard enters the industry. Um, we're really able to pull it together. I don't know how many of you guys are back here in the early days when uh, when Monolink existed, <laughs> before uh, before uh, DDI really took hold, and before HDMI became the the soup du jour standards. When when we still had the mess of a uh, composite S video, uh, FiveWire, VGA, and all this being used for actual um, uh, to get as high a resolution in your home theater as possible. Um, once HDMI came and kind of rang things in, you can just see this like natural progression. Um, you know, like yeah, once something new and advanced comes in, those things that were older just became extinct. Um, take Component, for example. It's not even existing on the back of, a, of, a, of, of any new Blu-ray players. And I think that the eventual progression is going to be kind of the same way. Now, HDMI, of course, will never go away as a standard because it is a standard, um, not, a, not, a, not a transport system standard, but like a, a standard really that was uh, brought about to um, help control and 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 maintain uh, the actual content uh, as it goes it goes down the line. Never switch left in <laughs> six months. Never <laughs> you crack it. Oh yeah, well exactly. But <laughs> but see, but that's another thing is you know um, I I had this. A lot of people uh, believe that uh, HDCP is for high definition content protection uh, or copyright protection. It's not. It's uh, it's, it's high bandwidth uh, uh, content protection. It's good protecting the content as to make sure it's not affected as it travels through a system. Um, so HDCP was never invented to prevent pirates. Um, that's that's not that's not what actually it came into play for. It's been for, uh, invented to protect the uh, content as it moves across transport systems such as TDMS or the uh, the crazy custom single wire. Uh, Cat5 extension things that were before um, versus like the uh, systems that are put together by HD Base T. But once a standard organization was able to come in and go, okay, this is how we're going to do it. This is how, look, studios, we're going to protect your content as it goes in so you know you get the best content. Don't be DTS and, and all those guys, we're going to protect that content too. Consumers, you're going to know that you have like, you know, a standard. You're, all your devices are going to be going across the same kind of cabling. And all your devices are going to be using the same cabling for their displays and such like that. It enabled us to, enabled us to accomplish more uh, without having to go from only that manufacturer because that manufacturer is only compatible with this one. And I think that's uh, fairly important. Um, if you guys get involved with the wireless realm, please, I'll be the first one in the way. <laughs> now, what about you guys as a, as a manufacturer? I mean, I know my own perspective as a manufacturer. Where is your main interest point on HDMI? Well, uh, you know, we're kind of a niche market, uh, so we don't make plasmas. Um, you know, there's, there's too many guys out there that do that. Uh, we're in the 5 to 12 to 15 to 17 inch uh, LCD touch, non-touch, point of sale, point of PS, open frame. Um, so we're looking at how we can apply that to an integrator, you know, we're more in the commercial market, frankly, I mean, you think of five, six, seven, ten, you know, that's, it's not something you can have in your house. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy, and it just, you know, it's ugly. It's functional, is what we do. Sexy. And there you go. <laughs> so, um, what we're looking at is how can we give this to our integrators and say, look, you know, take this, plug the power in, plug this one wire in, you're done. That's it. All done. You know? Yeah. Um, especially like kiosk manufacturers, they don't really want to monkey around with electronics. They want to build the casing, the enclosure, take ours, slap it, plug one cord in, and you're done. 
Yeah, I think that's and so, this is almost very similar to what was going on in the uh, the museum um, when we were doing it. They were they had the same sort of concept. They wanted to be able to and I mean they're reinventing the wheel. I, I think we're involved in that. I think I know which one you're talking about. I think we're involved in that yeah. as well. Still in our bar. Right. It's, 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 it's fine, it's fine. You're probably up there. Uh, it was a, it was it was a really really great project, and they were able to get much more going on with their human interaction with screens um, all over once again that single cable. Sure, I think that's. And as a manufacturer, I mean, we don't want to have forty five different inputs, uh, you know, because as a manufacturer, splits are going to cover everything. Like you said, that's video, DVI, analog, you know, this, that, you know. Before you know it, there's no back frame because it's all full of holes for different inputs. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Almost. One ring to rule them all. Yes. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Um, I think I think I might be approaching the end of my uh, my limit here, and I, I see that other uh, people are, are stepping up to take my place. So I want to thank you guys again um, uh, for coming out, and uh, I, I invite you guys to definitely stop by the HD Base T booth, get more information, come see the Atlanta product uh, as well. Thank you guys.